So today we will be learning about different aspects of chemical reactions. So firstly, reactions happen everywhere, not just in the science classroom. If you've ever added a Mentos to Diet Coke and seen it fizz everywhere, that is a chemical reaction. Or if you've ever made bread at home and watched it rising in the heat, that is also a chemical reaction. So what are we going to be learning about chemical reactions today? So objectively, we're going to be finding out what a chemical reaction is, why chemical reactions happen, and we're going to run through a brief overview of different kinds of reactions. So firstly, let's start with what a reaction is. So a reaction is the making and breaking of bonds. In doing so, it is the rearrangement of atoms to form new substances. So here is a simple example. Compound AB being broken down into A and B. So a compound is a substance that's made up of two or more elements. So here our compound is AB, which is made up of an A atom and a B atom. We break the bond between A and B, and we're forming two new substances. That is element A by itself, and element B by itself. So once again, a chemical reaction is the making and breaking of bonds to form new substances. And it does this by rearranging atoms. So now that we know what a reaction is, we can ask ourselves, why do reactions happen? So reactions occur because some atoms are more active than others. These very active atoms are going to rearrange to be with other more active atoms. So if we have a compound here of blue and purple, and we mix it with another compound of green and red, we're going to note that these are going to rearrange themselves to form new compounds of purple and red and green and blue. And this could be because the purple and red atoms are more active and therefore better suited for one another and will rearrange to be together. Sometimes reactions can occur spontaneously, meaning that they just happen because the two different compounds come in contact with each other. However, some other reactions require help and this can come from various different external factors that is something that is not within the reaction. This can happen in the form of things such as UV light or adding heat to help the reaction occur. So once again, reactions occur because some elements are more active than others and the atoms will seek out other elements that are also more active. This can happen spontaneously or can be helped along by other external factors like heat and light. So now we know what reactions are and why they happen, but we also categorize different kinds of reactions. So let's run through a brief overview of the different types of reactions. We're going to be looking at combination reactions, decomposition reactions, displacement reactions, and precipitate reactions. So we'll start first with combination reactions. So a combination reaction occurs when you have two elements or compounds that combine together to form a single new compound, such as A plus B going together to form AB. Again, a combination reaction is when you have two or more elements or compounds that combine together to form a single new compound. The next reaction we'll be looking at is decomposition reactions which are pretty much the opposite to combination reactions. In a decomposition reaction, you have a single compound that breaks down into more simple compounds or singular elements. So you have a compound such as AB that breaks down to become two simpler new elements or compounds. The third reaction we look at is a displacement reaction. A displacement reaction is defined by a single element displacing another element from a compound. Here we have the singular element of C that displaces the element of B from its AB compound, forming a new compound AC and leaving B as a singular element on its own. The last reaction we focus on in this topic is precipitate reactions. These are a little more tricky, where you have two compounds in solution that when they come together, they exchange ions to form two new compounds, 
one of which will remain in solution, that is to remain a liquid, and the other that becomes insoluble, so it's going to become a solid, and we're going to see it form as a precipitate. So let's go over that one more time. We're going to have two different compounds in solution, so as liquids, we're going to add them together, and this is going to form two new compounds, one that stays a liquid, and one that forms as a solid, or a precipitate, because the compound that is formed is insoluble. So let's quickly run through our four different reactions. Combination reactions, where two elements or compounds come together to form a new compound. Decomposition reactions, which is the opposite, where a compound is decomposed or broken down into two simpler compounds or singular elements. Displacement reactions, where a singular element is going to displace an element from a compound. And precipitate reactions, where we take two compounds in solution, they exchange ions to form two new compounds, one of which is going to be insoluble and become a precipitate. In the following videos, we're going to be focusing on each individual reaction, breaking down why they happen, observations that we will see, and going through some exam questions. So from this video, I would like you to take away that chemical reactions are the making and breaking of bonds for the rearrangement of atoms to form new substances. Reactions happen because some elements are more active than others, so the atoms are going to seek out other more active elements, and the four different types of reactions we learnt. Combination reactions decomposition reactions, displacement reactions, and precipitation reactions.